Hello, Marcel here to show you cloth tearing and particle flow display operator in Lucid Physics plugin for 3ds Max. Being able to simulate cloth tearing can help you add important effects into your scene, like cloth being cut or hole punching or just generally things falling apart. And there are two ways that we can simulate cloth tearing using Lucid. First way is automatically by allowing Lucid to calculate the stress on each of the cloth springs inside the simulation and break those constraints for you. And this method is useful for simulating cloth when it is under stress, for example if character's arm bends too far, if something is stretching a piece of cloth beyond its intended limit, and this way you can let Lucid do all the work for you without having to deal with manual controls too much. So I have opened one of the sample scenes which are available on our website, and this scene just contains a piece of cloth which is fixed along these points by using the sub-selection, so we use the edit poly modifier to select just the border vertices of this cloth and it has a lucid modifier on it so we can select the cloth as our body preset and inside we have all the previously covered parameters for cloth simulation except for one parameter which we didn't discuss before and this is the tearing parameter as well as the random seed parameter. Because Lucid selects the springs inside the cloth to break during tearing on a random basis, we have added the random seed parameter. And the tearing parameter determines how sensitive the cloth is to be torn. So if it is set to zero, it will not be torn at all. And if it is set to one, it's going to be very easily torn and fall apart without too many forces applied to it. So I have also created a simple box object which has a convex body collision type. And this box is animated to move directly through my cloth object. So if I just go to frame 0 and I start my simulation, we can see that as soon as the box object touches the cloth, it starts to pull it backwards and it pulls it backwards more and more each frame until some point where the cloth can no longer withstand the stress of being pushed and it just rips apart. So this way we have created a hole inside of our cloth object. Notice that if I select my object and I go into my cloth settings and I set the tearing parameter to be a larger value, let's set it to something like 0.9, it will now take significantly less energy to break this cloth object apart. Conversely, if I go into my cloth object and set my tearing to a lower value, something like 0.4, and I simulate, it will now take a lot more to break it, so it's going to bend a lot further before it finally gives in and rips at its seams. As you can see, the tearing is very sensitive to the topology that you have. It will not re-triangulate your mesh, so it is important to have proper topology with something like a tessellation modifier or any other other remeshing option which will produce some nice realistic looking tearing effect. In this case our hole is not exactly realistic but this is mostly due to the fact that our cloth object is very regular. We just have a bunch of triangles in a very uniform pattern like this. So this is not the best topology to have for cloth tearing. It is also possible to have more control over exactly where your object will be torn and this can be done through a map. And to demonstrate this let me just quickly set up a scene from scratch where we'll have a cloth object represented by our little plane object and I'm just going to increase the segment length to something like 20 by 20. I will add an edit poly modifier and its purpose will just be to select the corner vertices of the cloth and I might just select a couple of edges like maybe this and this one. And finally I will use the lucid cloth preset which will add our lucid modifier on top and it will set our body type to cloth. I will bump up the tearing slightly maybe to a value something like 0.6 and if you notice we also have the cloth tearing map over here. Right now it's set to none and this is something that we're going to assign right now. So I'm just going to go to my material editor, set my diffuse color to gradient ramp map and I will just make it visible inside the viewport and assign it to my mesh. Change the interpolation type to solid. Gradient type, I'll change it from linear to something like a pong which creates these two lines on my texture. So now having done this I'm just going to take my gradient ramp and drop it onto the cloth tearing map and I'll instance it so we can adjust these parameters if needed later. On. I also added a tessellate modifier just so we have a more tear friendly topology and then inverted my map so that we have black values symbolizing where there is no tearing going on then we have a white stripe symbolizing where the tearing will happen. One other thing that I did is I increased the tearing parameter from 0.6 to a 0.94 value. This came about after playing around with the simulation a little bit. So if I press simulate right now and if I start simulating you can see that it is tearing the cloth and the parts of the cloth where we have the stripes are now breaking apart and what we end up with is a piece of cloth which is not connected in these areas. If I break the simulation and go back to my map and update it, maybe if I make the stripes a little bit wider, when I simulate these stripes are now going to break as well and 
the pieces of cloth that we are left with are a lot thinner. Just like before, I can go and simulate my whole scene. And after the simulation has completed, I can play it back in real time. And we have our beautiful distraction happening in real time inside the viewport. Besides tearing cloth, it is also possible to tear inflated objects. And for that, we will load one of the other scenes that is also provided as a sample file on the website. And here we have a sphere object, which is set to an inflated body type being pushed from the top down using this rectangle angle object. And before the simulation, the rectangle just passes straight through the sphere. But once I start simulating, you can see that it starts squishing our bouncing ball sphere to a point where it can no longer withstand the pressure of this object and it just kind of cracks and crumbles like a little piece of eggshell. So this could be useful for creating effects where things are being cracked or broken apart using inflated objects. And you can probably get a lot more interesting effects if you have better topology and more intricate meshes. Another feature which we'll discuss is the new particle flow display operator. Previously, we were able to mesh our particle flow simulations using particle flow mesher object in Lucid. However, this is not ideal when you have multiple particle flow object because it would only simulate the very first one. To address this problem, we have added a new operator which is specifically designed for previewing and meshing your particle flow fluid and geometry objects. So I'm just going to go and create a quick particle flow setup. I'll use a PF source object and I'm going to go into my particle view and just quickly create some flowing fluid. Now I'm going to throw my Lucid fluid operator into the mix and create a Lucid flex settings object. You can see that we now have a little icon for that inside the viewport so you can select it using this icon instead of always having to go to the toolbar and you can turn off this icon inside the modify panel as well so I'm just going to set the particle radius to some value other than zero it's going to be something like one is fine then I'm going to start the simulation and we can see that we have some fluid happening inside our scene it looks like a little waterfall at the moment and this should be sufficient for our case in this demonstration so right now we're displaying this as geometry and to replace these boxes with actual particles I can add my loose display operator into this event replacing the previous display action. Once I do that, you can see that inside the viewport, our boxes have now been replaced with lucid particles and they are now reflecting the actual size of the particles that are being simulated. So if I go into my flex settings and I change my particle radius to a different value, something like three, the particles that are being simulated will be three times as big. Let's increase the particle count a little bit just so we can see a lot more of them inside the viewport. Let's change it from 200 to 2000 and I'm just going to increase their radius a little bit just so that we can see the difference between particle view and the meshing view. So right now these are particles and they are displayed as particles. Let me just change the color to something more user friendly. And now I have an option to go into my Lucid display operator and switch this from show as particles to show as a mesh. Once I do that, these particles are being meshed together using our meshing algorithm. And what we get as a result is some nice fluid geometry. So I can increase the granularity to speed things up. Maybe I'll change it to four. And in real time, we see how this affects the particle mesh inside the viewport. I can also make it finer and maybe set it to one. And then the particles become more spherical in this case. So another option that we have here is the ability to make this renderable. If I render this out right now, we will get our particle mesh for the render output. But if I switch off our renderable option, we'll go back to box display for these particles because the other render operator, which is inside our event, will take over and render the shapes of the particles inside the viewport. So the Lucid display operator allows you to both render particles inside render output and display them inside the viewport at the same time. Another useful application of this new Lucid display operator is the ability to display the Lucid particle flow geometry as particles as opposed to the final mesh. And to show this, let me create another particle flow setup really quickly. So as we have gone over in the previous video, I have created a particle flow setup where I have my Lucid geometry operator and it is using the shape instance operator that refers to this cylinder inside our scene to create a whole bunch of cylinders as our inflated objects. If I just press simulate right now, these cylinders will just start falling out of our emitter object. And this is already great, except for the fact that if we want to debug our scene, there is no way to preview these cylinders as they are being simulated inside flex using particles. That is until now with our new Lucid display operator. So let me just replace the previous operator with this one 
and as soon as they do that inside the viewport you can see that our inflated geometries have been replaced with actual particle objects and as they are falling down they are being updated using the particles and just like before the radius of these particles is used during the simulation if I increase this to a different value and I start the simulation again you can see that the particles are now a lot thicker than they were before the only thing about the lucid display operator is that in this case it doesn't make sense to show it as a mesh because we already had it as a mesh before so you only need this operator really to show the lucid geometry as particles so it has no other purpose for the geometry operator like it has for the fluid operator for example but it's still quite useful in this scenario if you want to switch between displaying particles and displaying the final geometry all I need to do is toggle this lucid display on and I can add my normal particle flow display operator back into the mix so I'm just gonna drop it right below the lucid geometry and if I set the output type to geometry and I start my simulation we can see that we get our meshes back so these are just a few more features which I hope will help out in your lucid simulations and add something a little extra to your workflow. Thank you very much for watching.